Hey everybody, uh, I'm actually waiting for some uh, potting material. No, I don't mean soil to plant plants. I mean an epoxy material for uh, resealing up that alternator that I repaired. So while I'm waiting for that, I turn my attention to uh, the seal that's on the top here. And I don't even know if the seal is bad, but I'm just thinking that as long as I've got this accessible right now, it'd be a good time to change that seal. So I looked up the uh, in the parts catalog, I got the Mercury part number for this. And then I plugged that into Google and found out that that seal crosses to a federal mogul number and a uh, SKF number. So it must be a pretty common uh, automotive use seal. And then I use those numbers to uh, go on to eBay and find a deal on a new old stock Chicago Rawhide uh, seal. So I get a brand new seal for this thing for like seven bucks shipped. And uh, sure enough, it's a brand new seal, never used. Well, it's been a while since I've been down here in the shop working on the uh, Mercury Tower of Power motor. And uh, part of the reason is I really haven't had much time to do anything down here in the shop. And the other reason is I was actually waiting for a shipment to come in of some, uh, some 3M potting compound. Um, so essentially... I finished the wiring, rewiring that uh, alternator, and I want to seal that back up and repot it. And originally, I was going to use uh, this particular uh, product here is DevCon plastic welder. I was going to use something like this, um, but then I was reading about how the, the one of the big differences between a potting compound and a regular epoxy like this is that the potting comp the potting compound is supposed to not affect the insulation of the wiring or the enamel on the copper wire or the windings. So it's basically it's safe for that purpose. It can be, can be in direct contact with those windings and shouldn't cause a problem over time. My fear about this is that basically this is a two-part epoxy and what happens is when the A component and the B component um, meet, there's actually a chemical reaction that occurs and it's probably exothermic, probably gives off some heat and uh, it may also produce some chemical byproducts that could possibly harm the enamel on the wire of the actual windings. So if you actually look here, you can see the windings right here. Um, that copper wire is coated with an enamel coating that acts as an insulator so that as they wind that wire around um, itself, it doesn't just short itself out into one and act as one lump of copper. It actually acts as a, a dedicated winding. So we want to keep that intact. So I uh, researched online and found out that 3M makes this product. Um, and uh, I have a contact at 3M and uh, they were able to procure for me this cartridge. The uh, it, It's available, I guess, also in a uh, regular uh, self-contained dispenser like this. Um, but I opted for uh, this style here because I have a uh, mixing gun and this is a lot handier to use than uh, this and it's a lot less messy because you buy replacement throwaway mixing tips and the other thing that with this you've got to basically you've got to dispense this into a container or onto a piece of cardboard or something and then use a stick to stir it. What this does for you is this little special uh, nozzle right here actually has almost like a little auger. Uh, this is a little bit different style than the uh, this one. The other ones I see have like a little auger in there. This one's got a little bit different mechanism in it. But anyways, uh, what happens is as it dispenses through here, it mixes for you. So what comes out of the tip is already pre-mixed. So it's a really kind of handy thing. So. Let's get set up and uh, try and pot this thing. All right, now I don't know how much this flows, how loose or viscous this stuff is. So uh, it is an epoxy potting, compo co potting compound slash adhesive. Uh, it's black in color. I think they also have this in white or clear. 
but I opted for the black since the rest of this is black. Um, so not knowing how much this is going to flow, I think I'm going to maybe just do this in two two parts. I might just do it. I tape this with uh, painter's tape on the bottom, so hopefully this won't flow out all over the place. And I think I'm going to try and flow some in here. And if it if it's uh, if it behaves and doesn't run all over the place, I I'll try and do it all in one shot. But I might end up just pouring into the bottom there and maybe just coating the windings initially here and then waiting for that to set up and then removing the tape and and reconfiguring this so that I can get another uh, another shot at pouring it. So the first thing I need to do is I need to put my uh, my gun together. This particular gun, uh, these replacement tips, I picked these up at my local Napa. Um, but these are, I believe, 3M tips. My actual gun, though, is um, made by another company, I think. Yeah, this is a Loctite. Um, it's distributed by Loctite. I'm sure they don't make it. Probably haven't made for them. And then this actually comes with two plungers because there are some, apparently there are some products that require a two-to-one mixing ratio. So that that's, you would actually have one tube is a different size than the other tube. And this is to, to accommodate that. I've never used that. Never run into that once. So basically this loads in from the back. Pull this metal clip up. This slides back all the way. This tube goes in like this and this clicks shut and then there's a ratcheting mechanism in there so that as I pull the trigger it's going to actually ratchet this forward and cause this to go forward and because this is a 3M product I should have no problem with fitment of these mixing nozzles because these are 3M mixing nozzles there we go. And now, as I push this, you'll see it's dispensing. What's actually happening here is both tubes are being pushed evenly and dispensing the A and B components in here. And then as they go through this little labyrinth of plastic in there, uh, by design, they're made so that it's going to cause it to mix. I can see right now this doesn't, the way it's flowing, it doesn't appear to be as goopy as I was worried about it being. Oh, that does flow quite a bit. This might not look very pretty once I pull that tape off. Matter of fact, some of that tape may stick to this too, making it even more of a uh, kind of a train wreck, but it should do the job, even if it's not cosmetically pleasing to the eye. Now if this stuff was a lot thicker, then I would probably use a plastic uh, knife and uh, use it kind of as a spatula to help me spread it. But this stuff definitely, it's more like a typical potting compound where it's made to actually really flow easily and pour into the, uh, the area there. The other thing I can do is if I have too much, I can always uh, sand off the excess later. Because I can see that's actually pouring out the back side and, 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 uh, on the bottom here. So I should have should have ran a piece of tape on the inside edge here. Let me see if I can just get this to sit up there. Actually, if I put something, let's see, if I just put something heavy enough to rest up against that tape and hold it up like a little dam. Could use something a little heavier. There's a nice piece of stainless I got somewhere. There we go. I think I'm going to stop right there. Let that set up. Um, and then I'll, because if I keep flowing anymore, it's going to want to flow over my dam in the back here and start to leak out into places I don't want it to get. So I'm going to stop right there. So that's why I got extra nozzles. Because uh, what's going to happen is, see, I could take this off 
and uh, put the cap back on. There's actually these little things that stick in there to help keep those separated. And uh, all right, so now I'll uh, I'll go do something else. I'm putting new spark plugs in the Dodge Dakota today, and wires in a cap and rotor, and I put a new exhaust on, but. I didn't tape any of that because it's none of that's really, uh, you know, it's not really a interesting how-to type of thing. But I am going to go work on the truck, and we'll see how that works. I forgot what the uh, setup time was on this. I think there's a handling time and then there's a setup time, but it's hours. I know that. So actually, this says 70 minutes, so one hour and 10 minute work life work life non-corrosive to copper yada 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 70 minute work life i'm assuming that that after 70 minutes it's set to the point where you can't get it to flow anymore which is fine by me and just a quick close-up look of what it looks like so far all right it's the next day and uh so this stuff is fully cured by now so let's see what we got First question is, will the painter's tape come off easily without being all stuck to it? Not bad, so far. It's funny, there's a little bit right there that didn't cure, I wonder why that is. I bet you if I leave it open to the air, it will uh, it'll cure. Alright, that actually looks pretty good. And it doesn't look like it's going to stick down too far, All right, this way, but I've got to trim it because um, i got to have this ring right here exposed, I believe, right. or at least a little bit because I think there's some standoffs that this sits on, on the motor. But, uh, it's it's like hard plastic. Um, so I think I'm okay here. I didn't really get any on there. The clearance is good here, so the uh, flywheel's not going to hit this. So now I've got to construct a dam to. Uh, yeah, to finish pouring into here and fill these voids completely now. I'd like to try and do this all in one shot. The good news is that that bottom part there, it can't flow out the bottom anymore. This is all sealed. Oh, no, it's not. There's a void there. Son of a gun. How'd that happen? Don't! Oh. Alright, so maybe what I should do is trim this, trim this off. tape dam along this inside edge here. That's a bummer. There's actually, I could see, actually see daylight through there. I didn't apparently pour enough for it to flow into here. Alright, just modified an old chisel. And hopefully I can uh, cut this off. It would be great to dam this up, would be modeling clay. And I just realized this is the, I just realized that this is the top, so in reality, I really don't need that much clearance up top here. As long as I had clearance around so I could get the screw in, which I do bottom edge that's going to be more critical, which while I'm pouring is the top. Okay. All right, I ran out of painter's tape, so I used electrical tape, and actually the electrical tape, because it's narrower, allowed me to form this a little bit better, I think. So I've got my dam built on the bottom here, and I built up these side walls high enough so I should be able to flow over the top of that winding. So uh, let's 
give this a shot. It's not coming at the bottom, so looks like this is working. Almost up to the top edge of my little makeshift dam over here. But that's okay because even though I'm not up as high as this is over here, I am covering the winding. Nope. Oh. Just about to reach that level where I can't put any more in without it flowing out over the top. One little spot over here where it's not quite there yet. Well, that might be it. Yeah, I like the way that looks. Yeah, I'm going to leave that be for a few hours and I'll take the tape off. Well, it's been about eight hours and I decided to come back down here and check things out only to find that uh, like we had a little failure of my dam and now the uh, roll of tape I was using as a stand is epoxy to the table <laughs> all right so you can see that actually this was originally all filled and completely covered and now it's exposed so that much of it ran out Unfortunately, it's not cured hard as a rock like it was from the other day. But the other, you know, this morning when I started, the first pour was hard like a rock, but that had been given a full 24 hours cure time at least, not more. This is still pretty tacky. That looks like that sealed up though, it did finally seal up. So I think if we leave that alone should be okay but it looks like I'm gonna to have to uh, do a third pour by the looks of it should have put gloves on before I took that off and didn't realize it was gonna still be that tacky in spots all right so now I found this strip of sheet lead and uh, I molded that into a dam and I'm using my uh, machinist clamps to actually hold it in place and they actually also are doubling as a little stand to keep it up in the air. I held it up to the light and I don't see any light coming through. So I'm pretty sure I've got a decent seal now. And I'm going to try and re-pour this. Well, not really re-pour it, but pour some more in there and top it off. I'm also using my lab jack over here so I can uh, adjust the, the height of this so that this is tilted back. Um, because I, I don't really want it any higher on this side but I want it higher out here so hopefully this will by tilting it this way I'll be able to flow quite a bit more in there without flowing too much more out in this area I was just getting ready to flow some more uh, potting material into that alternator winding when it occurred to me that uh, I wanted to uh, try and effect a repair on this tilt switch so the tilt switch appears to be working perfectly fine it's just the wiring is all decrepit just like on the uh, alternator so what I did in this case here is rather than try and dig out this potted material um, is I just cut the uh, wires really short and uh, took off the insulation and cleaned up the uh, cleaned up the corrosion on the, the wires and what I'm going to do is I'm going to flow solder into this this braiding on here and then I'm going to attach two new wires to this and then um, I'm going to pot this whole area where the attachment is and hopefully that'll affect the decent repair on this tilt switch.
All right, so I finished soldering those, uh, connect those new wires to the old wires. Um, and then I uh, actually wrapped those two wires with a little piece of solid wire, soldered that. Then I uh, heat shrink tubing wrapped the two wires because they're going to be in close proximity to each other. And I want to make sure that they stay isolated from each other uh, while the, uh, the potting material sets up. I made myself a little dam by wrapping this tape around a couple times. So I should be able to fill that up and uh, pot the whole back of this in there. And that should work. Hopefully. If not, then I'm going to have to get a tilt switch online somewhere. That'll just about do it for that. Alright, it's been a couple of days since I've been down here. Let's uh, check this out. Pretty good. That's, that's really hard stuff once it sets up fully. All that tackiness that I was feeling the other day, that's all gone. No sticky residue. Nice. So I'm just going to have to grind out this little bit of run out over here. Well, I might not even have to. It might, looks like that might not even be in the way. I might just leave that. Try it and see what happens. Try mounting it. And then uh, here's my uh, my tilt switch. <laughs> I actually thought that was still tape on there. That's actually the... Uh, that's actually the potting material. Not bad. I think that's going to work. So, saved a few bucks there. <laughs>